Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat, and today's video comes from a request from Daniel. And Daniel asked if we could do a video showing how to use the teach mode on the SMX control. Truth of the matter is, the teach mode works exactly the same whether you're in an EMX, KMX, SMX, or the RMX. And in our video today, we're using the DPM RX2 with the RMX control. Okay, now sometimes people will say, well, what do you use the teach mode for? The teach mode is part of the DRO or the manual mode. And what it allows you to do is remember certain positions for either drilling or just positioning the tool to a certain point. And it'll also connect the dots and let you do milling events so you can mill around a certain part and go point to point by hand and it'll remember where you went and connect the dots and make a program. When you're done with that, what you do is to convert that into a regular program which will allow you to make more of the same parts over and over again. Um, the other reason you would use a teach mode would be if I had a part that needs reverse engineering. Somebody comes into your shop, he's got a part, no print, and uh, you set the part up and find a zero point on it to use, and then as a reference, use your Indicol or something like that to pick up each entity of that piece part and have the control remember that, make a program for that. We're gonna use the first of those two scenarios now, and what I've got is a three by three inch block. I drew myself a little print to give me an idea what I need to do. I have three holes that I have to drill in here, and I gotta cut a quarter inch ledge around the outside, okay? So why don't we get started? First thing I'm gonna do is I'm in the DRO mode already. I've got my center drill in here, my zeros are set. So I'm just gonna go right away to the teach mode. And in here you'll see that it has position or drilling and it has mill begin. So my first hole it shows me is at one inch and a quarter, I'm sorry, one inch. It was right the first time. So I'm just gonna set this at my one inch dimension. And the y-axis is at minus three quarters. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to remember that position, then turn on my spindle and drill this hole. Okay, now I'm going to move to my next position, which is an inch and a quarter both directions. So 1.250 here. And here. Have it remember that as well. Drill the hole. Move to my third position, which is at two inches in both axes. Remember that position, drill that last hole. Okay, so now I'm going to turn it off and change drill bits. So I'm just gonna get it out of the way a little bit. Take out my center drill, put in my drill bit. And now I'm gonna start over the process the same way that I just did. In fact, to make it even easier, what I'll do is I'll go back to the first or the last hole that I did and make it the first hole now. So I'm gonna go back to the two inch dimension here. Remember that position, turn on my spindle, use a little oil. Move to the next hole. So now I'm back to one and a quarter both ways. Right there, remember that position. Okay. 
Then move to my first hole, which was at one inch. And minus three quarters. Okay, remember that position, drill that last hole. Okay, the last thing I got to do is change to an end mill and cut the outside of the part. And what I'm actually using is a 5 8 end mill in here. So because I want to leave a quarter inch ledge around it, I have to take half the end mill and then subtract the quarter inch away, which gives me 062. Okay, so just so you know what I'm doing before I do it. Take this out. Put that tool in there. And now I'm ready to go. The only thing is I'm going to have to jog the head a little bit. So I'm going to push and teach here. Go to jog, go to minus. Just bring the quill down where I got a little bit more to work with and then turn my spindle back on. So I'm going to go back to teach, turn my spindle back on, and I'm going to align this where I want to be. So I need to be at 062 here. Right there. And then I'm just going to bring this thing down to the depth I want to cut at. I want to actually cut down here at a little bit lower depth. So let me put this at uh, a reasonable amount that you'll be able to see what I'm doing here. Looks about good there. I'm just going to zero my Z here so that we know where I'm at. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to cut through the part, okay? So this is going to begin, be the beginning of my milling event. So I push begin there and you'll notice it changes and says continue mill or end. And now I'm just going to take a cut. I'm going to end up at 3 inches 062. And I'm going to tell it continue mill, use a little more oil, move the other axis. Same number here, I got to go to a negative 3 inches 062. And tell it continue mill again. then end at my final 062, which would be right there. Tell it to continue one more time. Okay, and at that point, I'm going to push end, and then I'm going to push end teach. And so what that does right there, that completes the process. I've taught it to drill all three holes two different times with two different tools, and then I taught it how to do the milling. So what we're going to do now is show how the part looks in the program mode. So when I come over to the program mode, it doesn't have a name yet. I can give it a name with the keyboard if I need to. But in this case, I'm just going to go to the beginning. And you'll see that it doesn't look quite right to start with because it doesn't have all the information yet. So what I'm going to do is on this first event, I'm going to fill in my RPM and tell it to use tool number one. Okay, then I'm going to go to the second one, same RPM, same tool. I'm going to go to the third one, same RPM, same tool. Now I'm going to switch tools. So here I'm going to go with the same RPM, but tell it tool number two. Same here. And same here. 
Last but not least, it's asking me to tell it about the milling events. So everything is filled in except for where my RPM is, okay, and my tool offset is not correct, okay? So my tool offset, because of the way I was machining, has to be on the center. I'm still using the same RPM, but I wanna put a feed rate in here of at least 10 inches a minute. Tell it tool number three, and see how it automatically says yes, and you'll see that the picture looks correct. So there's my three holes. The rest of this is showing each event of the milling cycle. See how it highlights? So as I go backwards, you're gonna see now that there is my last hole, my fifth hole, my fourth hole, my third hole, my second hole, and my first hole. So at this point, I've got all of the programming done from using the teach mode and then filling in the blanks. One difference that might happen if you're in three axis mode, you'll also have some questions about the Z axis and how many pecs you wanna take in a Z feed rate. Other than that, it works exactly the same way in every one of the controls. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna pause for a minute, change parts, and then I'm gonna do a short video showing the actual part being made with the program as opposed to me turning the handles by hand. Hey everybody, it's Tracking Pat here with some of my best guys from the assembly department reminding you that if you like these videos, don't forget to push the like button. If you wanna subscribe so that we have a better idea who's watching us, hit the subscribe button over here. And of course, if you wanna see the next video, then slam this one over here. And as always, I hope you enjoy the video and most importantly, don't forget, keep on tracking.